When you think of the word grandmaster, you typically don't think of the word resign in a winning position. But today, that is what we are going to focus on. I have picked out seven positions where, well, to repeat myself, a grandmaster resigns in a winning position. You don't see that every day. So they're going to go in ascending difficulty. If you would guys like to set up the position beforehand, I'll post the fen down below and you can copy and paste that. Pause the video. Try to solve it yourself. See if you can win a game where others lost. So <clears throat> this is position one. What is going on? Well, white has one, two, three attackers on that guy. That guy cannot move, so one would think, because then black would lose the rook. So black here just thought, hey, I'm going to lose a piece. There's nothing I could do. You might be looking at things like queen takes h2 and bishop check to win the queen, but at the end of the day, you still lose a rook. So this is far from good enough. So what do we do? Look for invisible moves. What if I told you there is somewhere you can move this dark squared bishop? Then, maybe, you would find the invisible move. Bishop to g1. Brutal. So what this move does is it threatens checkmate on h2, but you never think to move a bishop right next to the opponent's king on g1. I mean, I've never seen that before. So you see how, if you haven't seen patterns or ideas before, they typically don't come to you. They're, they're invisible. But now, if white responds to the threat on the queen, you checkmate them. So their only move is to take with the king. And now you win a queen, and you are just winning the game. So you can even take, and if rook here, that is barely a pin because you have a check and you get out of it. So, first position, bishop g1 would have won the game. Now, ascending order of difficulty. Number two. So in this position, white took the queen. Black took the queen back, and white resigned. You might be like, what? Why would white resign? They're up a queen. Well, the point is, this queen has to move, and this queen is doing the job of guarding d1. So if the queen steps off of d1, white gets back rank mated. So it can't come to e2, can't come to d1, can't come to f3, but why can't it come to g4? Well, then either h5 or f5, black could take their pick, this queen now would be forced to move, and there's just nowhere to move to uh, safely. If it tries to go to f3, this would be an easily winning endgame for black, right? So what to do? Let's see. Rook takes, rook takes. Don't resign. Think of any move that could make the game last one move longer. So bishop takes g6. Now, either direction that black captures back, the queen can safely go to g4. Because now you've created a backwards pawn if the f pawn were to extend. So there's nothing that could kick the queen off. And just to show f5 here, check whichever way the king goes, queen h6, you pick up the rook. This one, surprising. But white was winning. Let's look at number three. Well, that looks like number two to me. Oh, did I miss one? Okay. All right, we're going to do this one. This one is getting crazy. This is where they start to get crazy. Uh, this one is black to win. So what's going on? Well, we have two attackers on this rook. They only have one defender. So why can't we just take? Let's see. Rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Oh no. Queen takes f8. That is mate. So our queen is glued to f8. We have to defend this rook. <clears throat> you can't do something like rook takes, rook takes, queen back because they're threatening this h7 mate as well. So what do we do? Try to think. This one's hard. The only move is queen to f7. Ridiculous. The point of this move is, of course, they have to take the queen for any type of, you know, play in the game. But the point is now you take this rook with check, and after the king moves, you take this rook and you block the back rank mate. You are winning because you have a knight. Try to write, try to route that knight to either f4 or c4, and good things will happen. On top of that, you have two rooks. So this should be easily winning. You can go king g8, stop any mate, free up this rook, activate your pieces, and life should be good. So, ascending order of difficulty. Okay, two of these you guys may have seen if you watch to the end of the video. But for those who haven't and are intrigued... I wanted to make this more of like a problem set for you guys to solve alongside. 
So what's going on here? Well, black is threatening. Queen takes h3, and that would be checkmate. White cannot exactly take the rook. Why? Well, because this will come with check, and black will pick up more pieces and win the game. So you might see rook to e8, check. What does this move do? Well, it forces the king to d7. That is the only legal move. And now we are threatening the, or black rather, is threatening the rook, and he's also threatening the pawn checkmate. So it looks like the position just got harder. But what is the benefit of black's king beyond d7 to white? The benefit to white is that this bishop is now pinned on the d file. So as you could see, this knight guards e3, and since the bishop is pinned, we are free to move our rook to e3 and hit the queen and also stop checkmate. Good things. Now this queen has to guard this bishop. Whether it goes to f4, h4, g7 is up to, dis to, up to the discretion of your opponent. Let's say he went queen f4. Phase number two, how do you solve this? Well, rook takes bishop, queen takes rook, rook d3, pinning the queen to the king. You might say, hey, that blunders a rook. I would say, no, it doesn't. And this is a winning endgame for white because we have a knight and they do not. Says it's slightly balanced, barely. Just get your king in the game and you will win this game. Okay. Now, super crazy. This one, you are playing white. Black is defending a pawn that is one away from promoting. Our F pawn is obscuring the vision of the bishop. And they are threatening rook to c1, booting the king, and promoting a queen. So what do we do? This doesn't work, right? If we make a queen, they're still just going to go rook c1 check. They're going to be like, hey, I don't even care about your queen. I'm going to make a queen, and then I'll care about your queen. So what do we do? Well, the only move to, la to make the game last and move longer is rook to d6. So now after rook to d6, black has to take that. You might get pawn takes, but now this is no longer a threat. But that doesn't mean you should take the pawn. Because then they have counterplay and they stop all your pawns and they're winning. So that means you need to make progress. Pawn to f7, two pawns, one away from queening. Again, rook c1 is not a threat because you would just take the pawn. Who's stopping these guys? Nobody. So that's a win. But what about if they take with the rook? Well, it looks easier, but it's harder. Queen check, checkmate. Or <laughs> queen check, checkmate. Queen Pawn promotes check. That's what I was going for. Rook back to d8. Now be very careful. You cannot go queen e6. If you go queen e6, now there's going to be no way to stop rook c1 and the promotion of their queen. So you actually have to take their rook. Now what do you do? Well, pawn to f7. Again, rook c1 is no longer a threat. They're going to go rook f5 to stop the pawn from promoting, but it doesn't actually stop the pawn from promoting. This is an easily won endgame. You have a bishop, they do not. Kind of like the last one, but even easier. So, okay. Rook takes... Pawn promotes, what if they go king d7? Look for the best check. Best check would be closest to their king. This simplifies it the most. Either they go back to c8 and you get a transposition of the line we talked prior about. Or they go king c6 and it's a new game. Look for checks. Queen e8. Now, their only move really is king to b6. And it looks like they're winning. Again, rook c1. Promote, threaten queen, all the above, bad stuff. Except we have the move queen to e3, pinning the rook to the king. Now, wherever the king moves, you just take the rook, <clears throat> and then you push the pawn. And again, now enter that same endgame where you are up a bishop, except this time, even better because it comes with check. So this was a cool one by white. Now, there's two more. I don't know, I'm going to need to pick up the last one. Because uh, I doubled the same position into. So this one's the hardest one. And there's going to be a cool one. Queen takes h2. Black was winning. And after queen takes h2, white resigned. Why? Well, after king takes the only move, he was afraid of rook c to g8. And he couldn't find a way to stop this ladder mate. Can you find a way to stop the ladder mate? The only logical move... At face value is queen to h3, but this doesn't work because bishop takes, king takes, checkmate. Even if you don't take, you're at a deficit, you're going to lose that game and get checkmated regardless. So how do you make this game last just one move longer? 
because that's what we could do. Well, pawn to e6. Pawn to e6 is a critical move. The reason it's a critical move is it opens up the fifth rank. Do you see how we can use the fifth rank to stop checkmate? Well, we are doubled up on the c file, so we actually have rook takes c5, and after pawn takes rook takes, you see you are stopping checkmate. If they take, we're just going to be up a queen for a rook. So say they don't take, don't get checkmated again. Go rook to h5. Now they have no more threats. Their king is trapped in the corner. You're up material. This should be a pretty easy game to win. Now, we are going to do one more. Bear with me as I find it. Uh, this is it. Yeah, so I forgot to copy the fen. Or I copied the wrong fen, rather. We'll input it in chess.com. Uh, like that. Boom. Hopefully you guys didn't click off. But in this position, white played queen takes f6 and black resigned. Why did black resign? Well, if you take the queen, then rook to g3 check forces the king to h8 and bishop takes f6 as checkmate. So that is why he resigned. However, that is not forced. So now you might start thinking, well, how could I make the game last longer? You might say queen to e1, for example, to dislodge the bishop and then take the queen. You'd be up material, right? So fair statement. Except after queen to e1, there's king to h2. Now there is no more checks. You take the bishop, they backwards capture your queen. So that doesn't quite work. So queen takes f6. This one is pretty goofy. How do you solve it? Well, queen to g4. Crazy. Threaten your own checkmate. Stop their checkmate. And you're just giving away a whole queen. But the point of giving away the queen is that now you obstruct the vision of the rook from the king on the g file. So now you're able to take the queen. And keep in mind, you are just up a rook. Yes, they have a little bit of counterplay, but not actually. Your king is safe. You're up a rook. Looks a little scary, but you get your king out and you're fine. So these were seven puzzles where GMs resigned in winning positions. I'll post the fan in the description if you guys want to check them out and you're pausing the video. Thank you guys for watching as always and have a great day.